Hey YouTube, normally if you clap your hands or snap your fingers next to a large flat wall like the one behind me, the echo returns as a single pulse, as the impulse of pressure from your hands reaches the wall, bounces back and returns to your ears. This wall has a corrugated texture to it, which causes echoes from impulses like snaps and claps to return not as a single pulse, but as a chirp of descending frequency. Clapping your hands makes an impulse of pressure that expands at the speed of sound in all directions. When this pressure wave bounces off a flat surface, the wave changes its direction of travel perpendicular to the surface, but otherwise continues to expand at the same rate. The corrugated wall, however, produces a very different kind of echo. When the impulse of sound hits the wall, each corrugation acts like a new point source of sound, producing a new individual echo. Each of these echoes expands at the speed of sound in all directions and eventually returns to the observer. But each of these echoes has to travel a slightly different distance than all the others. Instead of hearing one echo, a succession of echoes is heard. And if the individual echoes arrive fast enough, they begin to sound like a continuous tone, rather than a series of claps. The phenomena of chirping man-made structures was first described by Christian Huygens in 1693 as he stood at the foot of the garden staircase of the Castle Chantilly in France. But this is not the first structure to produce this effect. A number of stepped pyramids in Mexico also produced chirped echoes for visitors who clapped their hands. Looking at the animation, it can be seen that the first waves to arrive back at the observer are very close together. This is because the difference in path lengths for these echoes is very small. As the original impulse propagates further down the wall, the path length for each round trip to the observer increases towards, but never quite reaches, the spacing of the corrugations. This causes the chirping sound, which starts at a high frequency, but then falls off without ever quite reaching a steady pitch. Looking at a spectrogram, the chirp can be seen as a vertical line that sweeps towards a gradually decreasing slope. To check this idea, I made a spreadsheet that calculates the time of flight for each echo for an ideal chirping wall. The difference between each time of flight is then calculated and used to find the apparent frequency, given that frequency is 1 over the period of a signal. Looking at a graph of the frequency over time, there is a strong similarity to the spectrogram of the chirped echo. There is one other bizarre feature to these chirping walls. They can also be thought of as diffraction gratings. Much like the multicolored reflections for my portable hard drive, the chirps from these walls are a rainbow of sound. At shallow angles, all but the shortest wavelengths cancel out, and as the clap gets further away and hits the wall at steeper angles, the higher frequencies cancel out, and the lower frequencies begin to constructively interfere. Both the time of flight and diffraction can explain the chirp made by these walls, and makes them an interesting experience if you can find them. If you run into any chirping structures, let me know in the comments. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you'd like to see more like this, check out my channel. Thanks for watching.